Welcome to another episode of Metal Roofing University. I'm your host, Adam Clark, and my co-host, as always, Mason Burchette. How's it going, Adam? Good. What's up, man? Uh, you know, same old, same old, same bowl of soup, just reheated. Nice. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, my bowl of soup is my new Metal Roofing University swag. Oh, I finally got you a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's been asking, so I've, I've got a polo like this, if you're watching the video, and I wear it all the time. And I got one that didn't fit you. Extra large. You. Come on, buddy. And uh, so he's been ragging me for like three months. Finally pulled through. Finally got you one. Well, look at me. Yeah. I'm wearing it even during the one podcast episode <laughs> that we do every three months. <laughs> Love it. So timing was good. Well, today we are going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart as an operations guy. Proper packaging, handling, and... Storage. Ooh, chills went up my spine. This is going to be an exciting one. Well, you might think it's not going to be exciting because none of those things are um, particularly interesting on their own, but you put them together and they make quite a dynamic trio. Okay. All right. I'm here for it. So metal roofing is obviously it's different than some traditional roofing systems, not only in the way that it's made and that it's installed, but even the way that you store the materials. Um, it has to be done in a very specific way. And so what we want to talk about is the proper way to package, handle, and store materials if you are going to have materials on site, uh, not installed on the roof immediately after receiving. Um, and we're really going to focus on tough ribbon standing seam. Those are the, the products that we uh, talk about the most. We're the champions of the through fasten system, so we'll spend a, a lot of time on the tough rib system. Uh, and so let's just kind of jump right into the packaging side of things. And Mason, from a manufacturing standpoint, maybe you can talk about some of the, the packaging uh, concepts and processes that we have in place to ensure the materials get to the job site in good, perfect, usable condition. Yeah, yeah, so um, different parts and pieces are packaged differently, of course. And so, you know, one of the, one of the first things uh, that we do when we manufacture a pack of panels is um, we cover them with a plastic and then we use uh, banding to make sure that we use tape to tape the ends of that plastic so it doesn't fly off flying down the road and then we use bands to bundle that pack that entire pack together so um, you know hopefully the idea of that is that it keeps water shed off of that pack so water is not sitting on top of that pack um, but it's still not something you want to leave out there long term. Yeah, and so we use a six mil non-slip plastic that's really, it's 48 inches wide. It's designed to actually not only sit on top of the tougher metal pack, which the panels cover 36 inches. They're about 38 inches wide when they're not installed. And we want the plastic to actually cascade over the edge to prevent any moisture from getting into the laps of the materials. And like Mason said, you know, we're using a uh, AAR banding that's designed to, um, not break down even with the weight of the metal as the metal's kind of pulling uh, away or trying to uh, to spread away from each other as you're picking it up with a forklift that green banding really secures everything together it cuts down on vibration mm -hmm. uh, when you're transporting the materials down the road and it really makes sure that you're left with a good um, clean pack that's that doesn't have any damages to the surface of the metal uh, another thing that we typically try to talk about when, when we talk about packaging is um, the type of panel dictates the type of packaging. The tough rib panel, the through fasten panel, is um, a, a, a perfectly symmetrical uh, or almost symmetrical profile, uh, and every piece uh, is able to actually cup on top of the piece that comes off the machine before it. So you might have a stack of 100 tough rib panels, and it may only be a couple of inches tall or thick. And so you're able to actually transport a lot of material with that cupped style of packaging with tougher. That's different than standing seam. We'll talk about that in just a second. But some of the things to remember is these packs are heavy. You know, right. when the panels are cupped and, and lapping together in a way. When you have 100 panels, let's say we have 100 panels at 20 feet long. That's 2,000 linear feet. That would be a big pack. We probably wouldn't package it quite that heavy. But at nearly two pounds a foot, that's 4,000 pounds per pack or right. per bundle that size. You know, so from a, from a packaging standpoint, 
We really want to make sure that we're keeping our bundles under 2,500 pounds. Uh, so a bigger job may have multiple bundles, but uh, from a packaging standpoint, that's really how we try to make sure the materials get out to the job site for the tough rib system. We also may have stacking boards or grooves, uh, slat boards that are banded to the panels or sometimes independent from the panels, uh, where if you're stacking multiple bundles on top of each other, you still have um, a slot where the forks can go in and pick mm -hmm. up the separated bundles. Yeah, those packs are heavier than they look. We've all seen the guy that's like, oh, that's not too big of a stack. I can pick that up. And then he comes to realize it's a couple hundred pounds. Um, yeah, so so think of the way like that when you're stacking like a stack of red solo cups, that's kind of what you're talking about, these Cupping, panels yeah. that stack. Because these aren't interlocking panels when we're talking about our three fasten systems like PBR panel or Tough Rib or even uh, 5E or corrugated those none of those are interlocking systems um unlike our tight lock panels standing seam panels those you have to stack a lot differently yeah so with standing seam because uh the left and the right side of the panel are different one actually locks over the other you can't cup these pieces together so two uh tighten lock or standing seam panels one on top of the other are not uniform. They won't perfectly sit on each other. Like Mason said, if you've got those solo cups that perfectly sit inside of each other, standing seam doesn't do that. So we have to have a unique packaging system for that product. Typically what we're doing, if it's just a couple of panels, you might be able to put them on their face and alternate uh, paint side. You basically want the paint side um, sandwiched in the middle of two panels with a primer on the outside. And you're basically making a bunch of two kit two piece combos right. um, as you build those out. So if you've got 10, 15 pieces, you might be able to put those on a pallet and have them laying face down or on their side uh, or on their, on their face. But with most of our standing seam packages, we build a crate and we make the crate walls tall enough where the standing seam panels can actually be stacked vertically in the crate. Right. And so when you hear that we're essentially stacking panels, paint on paint, that, that may sound alarming. But we have a film applicator on our standing seam manufacturing machine that actually adheres a film on top of the, the painted surface of those panels. So when those two painted surfaces are touching each other and packaging, they don't scrape the paint off of each other. Yeah. And would you rather have the paint kind of sandwiched between two pieces or on the outside of two pieces where you have a little bit more movement or exposure uh, to the elements when they're tra transporting down the road. So yeah, so crating is, is a really important part of our standing seam uh, packaging. You know, we build this with basically covers on the ends of the crate so that when they're when the crate's being pulled down the road, the wind is not, you know, blasting the panels that are there. And again, they're, they're strapped and they're banded and they're crated, which will allow them to get to the job site in perfect working condition. Right. They're strapped inside the crate. They're not as floating around in right. the crate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, that, that is when we're transporting, um, standing seam panels to a job site, but we also manufacture those on site. Yeah, the portable machines are a big deal. And, and you know, we can talk about that from the handling standpoint in, in just a little bit. But yeah, the portable machines are really great to, you know, go out if you've got a 90 foot long mm -hmm. panel, which we run, we've run longer than that. Right. Um, it's really hard to find a trailer to haul those, right? Sure. So we're going to try to get the trailer, the, the roll former out to the job site and actually deal with that on site, the manufacturing on site. So um, what about trim? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so trim is trim is actually packaged um, kind of in a unique way, and that's evolved at Best Buy Metals over the last couple of years. It's really interesting. We used to use this reinforced wax paper. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> it's rough. It was rough. So, I mean, every piece was, or every every profile. Like, if you had four ridge cap, you'd bundle them again. They cup mm -hmm. together like the panel, like tougher panels do, and then you roll out this roll of, of big wax paper. It's three feet wide. You set the panel down or the, the trim down inside, fold the ends, yep. wrap, take your tape, yep. which, which was like super cheap tape. You, yep. know, you paid like a dollar six cents for, you know, a, a whole roll of tape. And so you can never find the end of the tape. Oh, it's yeah. Like hidden in the actual there was a roll. There was a technique. You couldn't cut it. You had to pull it. Yeah, that way it kind of did the, right. the ripple thing. Yeah, you could always tell who had been there for a long time by the speed of their trim wrapping. I got really good at wrapping Christmas presents when we did it that way. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't wrap too many people, <laughs> thankfully. So yeah, but that, that's kind of that was kind of old technology, and now we have a, a wrapping machine that is actually a, a radius or radial wrapping machine where uh, a wheel spins with a strippable or not a strippable film with a plastic film, and so we just kind of feed this bundle through bundle of trim through on rollers, and it wraps and it packages everything up, and then we've got yeah. labeling. You know, that's one of the new technologies that we've introduced in the last couple of years. We actually have labeling where we can uh, clearly identify the order. The the customer name, the color, the profile, and it's right there on the label. We do that for our panel packs as well. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite machines that we actually have is the Easy Wrapper. Right? It was like our cheapest machine too, and it's so, so cool. We can really appreciate. Yeah, think it. of like uh, shrink wrap. It's literally the kind of material that's being used yeah. to to keep these trim packs together, and that helps them. That makes sure that the the pieces of trim aren't floating around or shifting in the pack. Because we used to have that a lot in the right. old way. That the pieces of trim would try to shift around. Um, and, and sometimes get scratched uh, when they were moving around inside of that wax paper. Yeah. But this, I mean, this package is it super tight and it prevents that those trims from moving around inside the package. Yeah, it's a 90 gauge blown plastic, which is very heavy. There's a tension resistance that's on this wheel. So it's actually kind of pulling towards the center of that trim pack. So it's, it's packaging everything really, really tight so it won't move. And it's actually a non-slip mater non material as well. So if you have a bunch of stacks of trim, you can actually stack them on top of each other. And like on some plastics, you think of like a slip and slide, it's everything mm. sliding around. Yeah, not but even when the stuff gets wet, it doesn't slide on top of each other. It's really nice. It also doesn't age uh, very quickly. Uh, we'll talk about a different product that does, but doesn't age very quickly out in the UV rays. Yeah. So even if you have a bundle of trim that's left out for a period of time, we're not saying leave it out forever but if it's left out for a couple of weeks you can still peel that plastic off and it's no big deal and the trim is going to be in good condition and typically it's going to be water sealed as well we don't guarantee that but if it's wrapped well it'll typically be water sealed as well so going on to the next um the next practical uh grouping or, or, or topic is going to be storage uh. right so you Per, you, you package, you get the materials out mm -hmm. to the job site. And this may be particularly um, important to homeowners and contractors, really to, to anybody, I guess. But you, you have to store the materials the right way. There are, okay. there are major, major, major consequences if the materials, the metal roofing materials, panels and trim, really, if they're not stored correctly. So what we're saying is, in the ideal circumstance, you should install the metal immediately right and not a lot of you know especially people that aren't educated with the industry we're in might not think it. they're like well this stuff's going on my roof it's okay to leave it out in the elements for for a couple of weeks right they might think that um but the alternative is actually true like you said you can actually encounter um a, some pretty bad scenarios if you leave this material out right in a bundle like that yeah particularly in a bundle and that's really what we want to focus on right now is you the, the, the panels themselves, if you had one panel and it was out by itself, right. even in the pouring rain, right. as long as it was on a slope and the water wasn't collecting, it would probably be perfectly fine. Right. It's when you have water that starts to get pinched or sandwiched between the panels that are cupped together, you know, that, that are cupped in the stack. Um, it's really hard to get that water to dry out. And if you have constant water that's exposed to the metal, what actually ends up happening is it permeates down through the paint and through the finishes and it rusts the paint or the, the steel underneath the paint right. finish. It causes this white rust to happen, uh, which is not always visible right off the bat, but it certainly compromises the adhesion of the paint and the primer mm -hmm. to the substrate. So you really wanna make sure that you are avoiding any type of moisture exposure. And that can happen a number of different ways. It can happen during transportation out to the job site you know if it's a rainy day it may not be avoidable you may not have a carriage you know hauler where you've got it, everything tarped in and closed so you you may have to let the materials dry out if they've been transported during uh inclement or rainy weather but you have to make sure they get dried out and then after that you know after they're dried out we typically would recommend if you can't install immediately put them in a climate controlled environment Sure. If possible, um, you know, it can be a, a garage, it can be a storage shed, whatever. Basically, what you want to avoid happening is you want to avoid having condensation start to form around these panels. Mm -hmm. And that's what will happen when you have major temperature changes. Um, so you want to make sure that you're actually storing these in an appropriate location. Now, some people can't store it in a climate controlled environment, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. just not practical for everybody's application. So, um, you know, what are some of the steps 
that we can take if you have to store it in a non-climate controlled environment. Yeah, uh, uh, well, you could build a pole barn and put it under that. <laughs> you could absolutely build a pole barn. <laughs> also, I mean, an- another advantage uh, of of the services that we provide is you don't have to order this material three weeks in advance. Right. You know, one of the advantages of these, these materials is that we manufacture them quickly. Some materials we can have to you the next day, same day or next day. Um, so really wait until you need the material, wait till it's about to get installed before you order it. Yeah. Uh, you know, check with us about the job that you're going to do. Make sure we've got, you're not doing something special that needs to be special ordered, but if it's stock materials that we have, uh, on the floor, wait until it, until you know a day or two before it's ready to get installed, and then order it. Or order it and just say, "Hey, I need this in two weeks." We right. can set a delivery yeah, date or a pickup sure. date in our system. Or I'll pick it up in two weeks. Or you know, right? We'll, we'll just make, make sure it. that if it's your two weeks turns into six weeks, you know, we don't want to store it at our facility mm-hmm. because we run into the same exact type of scenario. Exactly. We don't have room to store all of these pa- these panel packs in a climate controlled environment. So yeah, timing of your order, timing of picking up the materials, do your best to line everything up to get the materials as close to the installation date as possible. Um, another another uh, option that you could try uh, is actually covering the materials with non-plastic products like a canvas or a waterproof paper the reason that we don't want to see plastic used is because uh, i know we i know we already mentioned that we are covering the materials in plastic and our expectation is that they're not going to be left in that plastic Uh Uh, for us it's it's a uh, a very effective way to protect the panels during transportation that's why we use the plastic it's a better product than almost anything else that we've come across so what we're saying is don't store the materials covered in that same plastic we send. In fact, take that plastic off. If there's the expectation that you're going to be three, four, five weeks, six months, whatever the case mm-hmm. may be, and try to use another covering, uh, again, a canvas or a waterproof paper, uh, something that is actually breathable and that allows the water to, or the, the moisture in the air to actually move freely um, between the layers of the panels. Another thing that you could do is if you do have to store the materials outside, you typically want to elevate one side of the panel pack and uh, eight to 12 inches, it doesn't have to be a ton, but you, you do wanna support the pack. You know, if you've got a 20 foot pack of metal and you've got it raised 12 inches on, on one side, it'll bow in the middle and you don't wanna have that constant bow experience. So you wanna just use like shims, different, different width shims or height shims and kind of keep it flat, but keep the water moving down towards the edge and probably keep a fan blowing at the lowest edge of the panels and that'll help keep water moving off of the materials. Um, another thing to consider, um, oh, you're going to like this one. Oh, what happens to the strippable film? If you leave it on the panels for too long for standing seam, what happens to the strippable film? If you leave it on the panels too long, it becomes very hard to take off. It becomes impossible to take off. You have, um, two major problems. One, the adhesive doesn't like being out in the sun and it can dry up and it can make it really hard to peel it off. The main problem is the plastic material that we use for the strippable film is not UV resistant. And so it becomes brittle and it's like taking off like shreds. You're taking off chips, like little chips of plastic. Right. So if you have 120 foot panels, I already used that example, so I'll stick with it. You have 120 foot standing seam panels that have a strippable film on them. And let's just say that you've laid them out on the yard and they've been out in the yard for whatever you oh, know brother three weeks when you go to try to start peeling that that strippable film off of there you'll be you, hating life you'll grab a corner and you'll peel it expecting the whole 20 foot sheet to come off and a little two by two inch section is going to come <laughs> off and you're going to have to do a two by two inch section across that entire panel right for, for all 100 sheets and you it's really risk ever. damaging the paint no yeah. doubt yeah yeah having that film on there is fine if it's not exposed to the uv mm-hmm. it's less fine if it's being exposed to the sun and the adhesive is reacting it's a chemical it's reacting to the sun and it's changing uh so yeah it does compromise the paint so again it does help to put some type of canvas or put some type of paper over it something that stops the uv the heat is not so much the problem it's the it's the uv exposure um one more thing on on proper storage have you ever seen a tough rib pack on somebody's lawn for more than a couple of days? Oh, yeah. What happens? Uh, what are you talking about? Moisture? No, I'm talking about what happens to the grass. Oh, the grass. Yeah, the grass dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, even just even just a day or two. So if you have a tough rib metal pack, uh, standing seam, again, is crated. It's vertical. It doesn't t- 
touch or doesn't have the same type of impact on the grass the metal does but the metal still heats up even though it's reflective even though mm -hmm. it's energy star efficient it still does get pretty hot and, so and it's what, heavy and it's heavy so what ends up happening is you compact or compress all the grass even if you have it on stacking boards the heat from those panels will toast yeah you're gonna have a nice brown spot yeah. in the yard and it, it will take forever to come back because it dries down to the roots right we uh, would recommend just putting a fire pit there and putting a pole bar <laughs> yeah but, but another, <laughs> another pole bar in reference so try to store try to store your metal packs on your driveway if you can you know obviously you need to be careful when you're offloading the materials you don't really want to set a heavy metal pack down on like pebble stone like like a like a gravel driveway it can profile through the material it can profile so you still want to have like some stacking boards or something that will keep the panels off the ground but even if you have stacking boards on grass you will see your grass and your lawn look pretty disturbed right after the metal has been moved right this is another reason to get the material on the roof you know, ASAP. Good, yeah. good planning, folks. Good planning goes a long way. It does go a long way. <clears throat> okay, so we talked about packaging. Mm -hmm. We talked about storage, handling. Uh, so handling the materials, actually handling it either in, in packaged form. You already referenced like tough ropes heavier than it looks and the panels are heavier, heavier than they look. Mm -hmm. But also like handling them from the pack, from the metal bundle over to the roof or to the staging area and then up onto the roof. You've done a couple of metal roofs, uh, Mason. What's your experience with handling tough rib panels? Number one, wear gloves because no it will cut you up. Um, those edges are sharper than you might think they are, especially if you're handing one up to somebody and they kind of slide it out of your hand, it'll, it'll cut you. So wear, wear the, the proper gear. Another thing to really be wary of is this is a three foot wide panel. And so it's, it's a pretty big panel. Um, and especially if once you're on the roof or if you're handing it up to somebody on the roof, it can wind can catch that panel really quickly. Um, and if you're on the roof, that's a hazard because it'll blow you off. And you can also lose the panel and, and really get hurt that way. And of course, damage the material too. So that would be two of the first things I, I think of is, uh, um, you, know, you know, be aware of the shear when you're carrying that panel. Wind will carry it off and wear the proper equipment to actually carry the panel with. And we don't just talk about PPE personal protective equipment just for the fun of it all of our employees at best by metals even the managers even the owner if you're handling metal you have to wear cut resistant gloves yep cut, cut resistant sleeves long pants and leather boots or shoes yep. um because this stuff will yeah it'll, we have the scars i have scars on my hand from not wearing you know yeah gloves. oh you're the one who's responsible <laughs> that was me i'm the reason we have this policy yeah. um but but yeah so it's important to wear the right stuff and then yeah once the metal is up on the roof the general practice is put it down on the face of the roof as quickly as possible right right even we even see people who are you know you got a, a ground man and a roof man uh or woman and you hand it up and as soon as it goes up it's kind of tipped down and mm -hmm. the bottom of the panel is on the face or the top That's of the right. roof. That's right. Yeah, you kind of want to drag it up the slope of the roof, not be up there twirling it around trying to get it in place. That's definitely a hazard. Yeah, alignment and understanding your underlap panel. Like, So the panels, I said they were symmetrical, but there's an underlap side of tough rib that has an extra little leg, and there's an overlap. So when you're handing the metal up, you want to make sure that you're handling it handing it up in the right direction right because if somebody on the roof has to spin it 180 degrees they need to send it back better. down they need yeah. to send it back down mm -hmm. for sure and in terms of carrying the metal from the metal from the bundle pack yep. over to the roof a lot of times what we see the easiest way to do that is actually to pick the panel up on its edge That's so right. just one side and make sure it doesn't slide or rub ac across the panels that are underneath it and actually carry the panel on its edge yep. so it's the, the the three foot length is actually going angled down or straight down perpendicular to the ground that will help keep the panel rigid you know that'll help make sure that you're not bowing or distorting the panel when you're moving it uh, and that will also allow for maybe even multiple people to mm -hmm. grab that you know you might need to do a team lift say if a panel's over 15 feet it'd be helpful to have a person at the front and person at the end as you're walking it to get it prepared to lift it up onto the roof and then if you notice that it's in the wrong direction two people is easier to spin it around than just one yeah well, I'll, I'll just interject real, real quick right there because what happens a lot of times is especially on longer panels 15 foot or greater um you'll have a person on each of end of the panel and then when they try to pick it up square it'll actually buckle the panel in the middle and yeah. you're going to have a, a very unsightly buckle in the rib and it's not going to lay down right on the roof either right i was going to mention that even when when the materials are bundled together if you're moving it with a forklift or a tractor if you're moving the actual pack 
let's say the panel pack is over 25 feet long. Well, if you're only picking up in the middle of that pack, exactly what Mason's saying, kind of the opposite of what he's saying is mm -hmm. the weight of the panels on the left and the right side will be so heavy that they'll bow down towards the ground when you're picking up in the middle and you might crease every single one of those panels. Right. And the same thing is true if you are, if you pick it up from both ends and the middle is so heavy, especially on longer panels, you might um, crease it on the top side instead of the bottom side of yeah. that panel. That's especially true for 5V and corrugated. Right. Those, those buckle very easily when they're longer lengths like that. Yeah, so our recommendation is to pick it up, pick up a single panel by the edge, pick it up and make sure you don't drag it across the surface of the panel underneath it. Use multiple people if you have them. It's fun to install a roof with friends, so that's always a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Especially and, if they work for free. Yeah, we have free workers. <laughs> and and bring it over to the roof and, and, and slide it up onto the roof in the right direction so it can just be laid straight down uh, on the surface of the roof. Yep. In terms of standing seam, is that, are there any major differences there? Not really. I mean, I think you'll probably f fight the wind less with standing seam because it's only a, you know, a 16 inch wide panel usually, yeah. but this, I think the same exact practices apply. You don't, there's really not any scenario where you want to drag the panels across the surface of another panel. That's just a bad idea. You risk gouging it. You risk scratching paint. That's especially true the way we stack our standing seam panels because it is a paint on paint the way we stack it. Yeah, and I think maybe one of the cautions that I would say with standing seam, you know, Mason mentioned the panels bowing in the middle. If two people picked up a panel kind of width down towards the width of the or face of the panel um, parallel to the ground. Well, with standing seam, your rib spacing is 16 inches on center as opposed to tough rib, which is nine inches on center. So you run the risk of causing distortions or oil canning on the panel if you cause it to bow or curve too right. much. So right. that's probably the one caution that I would give. You might be able to get away with a little bit of radius movement, a little bit of bending movement with tough rib and not have oil canning. With standing seam, you really want to keep that panel upright and as rigid as possible. And you may even find that using a, a ladder that maybe has, uh, you know, we see people who use those um, pool noodles they cut an edge on it and they put it on the, the legs of a ladder to create like a soft surface but using those to assist sliding the panels up That's onto right. the roof to give it a little more support so it's not bowing as you're lifting the panel up yeah i was going to mention that supporting the the low end of the panel as far up as possible as somebody else is dragging it onto the roof is a pretty big deal because if they're using the eave edge of the roof as leverage you know and kind of trying to drag the panel up that way you're, you could certainly get that crown in the panel and might not even know it you know, until it's installed and then you see it oil canning. So yeah, that's a tough thing with standing seam is it looks good, but if you cause any type of distortion to the flat or to the panel, the flat pan of the panel, um, it may not be visible at first, but when it starts to thermally expand and contract, which all metal does, you'll really start to exaggerate that oil canning. So definitely use uh, some caution there. And uh, you know, if you've got questions about proper handling or proper storage, we try to take care of all the packaging so you don't have to. But if you have questions about that, let us know. I mean, that's one of the common questions or one of the common problems we run into is you know, people damaging materials mm -hmm. or getting this oil canning from, from uh, improper handling. So uh, give us a call. Let us know. Best Buy Metals. Um, you can reach out to us on any of our social platforms. Yep. We'd be happy to uh, engage with you there. Hey, do we have any extra hats? Yeah, we got some hats. You want to give a hat away to yeah, someone who, who has fun with us online? Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody uh, drop a comment. And uh, if you drop a comment on the, on the, the post, then we'll... Uh see if we can hook you up with a hat we'll cool. pick we'll pick a lucky winner to give it get yeah it. we'll pick a lucky winner um i did want to mention this real quick before we wrap up because i've seen this happen so we'll back back into the episode real quick is make sure you get your screws in the dry too don't mm -hmm. let your accessories sit out in yep. the water because um those screw bags are plastic they also have little holes in them and moisture will get in there and it'll rust those bad boys up uh, if if moisture is just sitting in that bag of screws uh seen that more than once so make sure you take your accessories in the garage treat them like your groceries yep yep get them in the, get them in the dry <laughs> get them in the dry all right you want to sign us out yep uh, so check us out on metalroofingu.com and if you've listened to the episode if you're listening to the episodes and you haven't subscribed you're doing us a disservice so subscribe to the podcast <laughs> it's not that hard hit the subscribe button and we would greatly appreciate it uh and like i already said check out metalroofingu.com we've got new install videos going up all the time uh we've got new articles hitting the blog all the time we've also got uh the monthly newsletter that's going out every month so if you haven't subscribed to that then go and do it. We'll catch you next time, guys. Nice.